Brothers and sisters, it's very good to see everyone again. Alhamdulillah. The title for today's lecture is kind of a unique title. The title is I Can't Get No Satisfaction The Curse of the Greedy and the Miserly. And inshallah, we'll talk about today how to find some satisfaction in our lives and how to avoid this curse of the greedy and the miserly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in well-known surah, surah al-takathur, al-hakam al-takathur hatta zurtum al-maqabir. Allah says, the, the haste, the mutual rivalry, rivalry for piling up the good things of this world diverts you until you visit the graves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to all humanity here. And he's saying, don't fall into this foolish race. Into this, some might call it a rat race. Right? Where you're just spinning your wheels, trying to pile up good things in your life. Good things meaning, excuse me, not good things. Trying to pile up mutual possessions. Trying to pile up things that you own, wealth trying to pile these things up until the day that you fall into the grave and you have nothing to show for your life but material possessions that do not follow you into the grave, do not vouch for you on the day of judgment and do you ultimately no good. And what kind of, what happens to a person to make them do these kinds of things? Two traits and they're not to be confused. The first is greed and the second is miserliness. What is greed? Sayyid Ladi, in a very, Sayyid Ladi has written many books, as many of, many of us know, and one of the most well known is Youth and Morals, that should, have, should be, have read by everyone here because it's a very quick and easy read. It's available all over the internet for anybody who wants to read it. It's a basic book for everybody here, inshallah. In that book, he talks about differentiating greed from miserliness. He says, Greed is an excessive and unending desire to acquire possess more than one needs or deserves. The very end is what is important. It's okay to have possessions. It's okay to make a job. It's commendable to have a job, to have a salary, to take care of yourself and your family, put clothes on your back, food on the plate in a nice home, inshallah. These, these things are okay. It's when you, you have this yearning this desire to take more and more and more than you need more than you really need to have a good life that turns into greed and this greed can apply to power can apply to wealth material possessions anything and then miserliness comes specifically to having this desire to accumulate wealth coupled with a lack of generosity with this wealth and so this, this is really the social danger of, of, of humanity. One, we fall into this rat race where we need to acquire and acquire and, and, and collect and collect. And subhanAllah, this is something that we learned from a young age. This concept of acquiring and not sharing. I was talking with a brother the other day and we were talking about a favorite game of ours when we were kids. Monopoly. Right? And the lessons that we learned from Monopoly is you start out with nothing. It's a zero-sum game, meaning that there's a very limited amount of property in this board. And the goal is to acquire it all. Acquire it all at the expense of everybody else and not to share it with anybody else. And it might sound like a foolish example, but it's really something that we have to recognize is ingrained in us within this society. This concept that, what does it mean to be successful? When you say, mashallah, you don't say mashallah if you're not Muslim, I guess. But you'll say, wow, this person is successful. They've attained success. What are you saying? They have a nice car. They have nice possessions. They have a well-paying job. These things, as Muslims, we know, and we, I've said this before, don't define success for us. 
They might be a tool towards success, but they are not the end all be all. The Prophet of Prophet ﷺ says, Islam does not resent a thing more than miserliness. And he talks about specific afflictions and calamities which arise from the greedy. He says a greedy person faces seven acute problems. And we'll go through each of them inshallah. Number one is worrying. A greedy person constantly has this worry that what they have is not enough. That what they've acquired is not enough and they need to acquire more. They need to accumulate more. They're constantly afflicted with this. This worrying translates into the second calamity the Prophet warns us about, which is depression. A depression that, why is it that I work so hard and yet I can't accumulate enough to satisfy myself? And it's, this is very important to qualify this. It's, it's many of us, subhanAllah, we work hard. Right? We come home and we're exhausted from some of the work. It's the nature of where we are. And a good hard day's work is not something to be set, it's not, it's not, it's something to be proud of. It's not something to be ashamed of. But it's important to understand why are we doing that. It's not simply to accumulate for the sake of accumulation. The third calamity that can befall the greedy is exhaustion. From which, this is in the hadith, from which death is the only relief. And with that relief, the greedy shall be more exhausted. The greedy are forever trying to accumulate, and so they end up with this exhaustion where sometimes you, he- you hear it. They can't make time for their families. Can't make time for society. Can't make time for volunteer work. Can't make time for sitting down with their spouse and asking them how their day was. Racked with this need, this burning desire to keep accumulating. A fourth fear is, a fourth, excuse me, calamity is fear. This fear that others may think them not to have enough. That they may be inadequate in the minds of others. For greed is intricately linked to pride and arrogance. That when somebody finds satisfaction, they don't care what others say about them. They don't care if the car they may be driving might not be as nice as the one next to them. And so fear. The fifth calamity is sadness, which can kind of be the accumulation of all of these things. The sixth calamity is judgment, a judgment that comes in the hereafter. The seventh calamity, therefore, is punishment, from which there is no escape or avoidance. And so these are really the seven calamities that fall upon the greedy and the miserly. For this reason, a miser can never rid themselves of worry and depression. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, I am amazed at the miserable misers, for they cause the poverty from which they run to come faster, and miss the wealth which they sought. In this life, they live the life of the poor and will be judged in the hereafter, the judgment of the rich. This is the ultimate curse, the paradox of the greedy. In this life, you live as if you are poor because you're constantly striving. You're constantly trying to accumulate possessions and goods and and just wealth for the sake of wealth. You don't have a purpose. So you live this life as if you don't have anything because you're always striving for it. And then in the hereafter, how are you judged? You're judged as someone who is rich. And we know that those who are are judged as, as, as the rich, they have more... Naim on which to be judged. They have more risk, more bounties on which they will be asked. The, the quote-unquote cliche rope with which to hang yourself, which is kind of a morbid cliche, but one that you can think of as, as to say, if you have possessions, you have to think, how am I going to spend them and how am I going to use them because I'll be asked about them. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So what's the solution? How do you attain satisfaction? Right? The number one solution I would posit, inshallah, and my, my, my hypothesis here, is that satisfaction comes when you have a purpose, when you have a goal in life. This can be a two-year goal, a five-year goal, a ten-year goal, but each and every one of us should have some goal in life. And that is something that we can all begin to think about. 
And inshallah, as Muslims, that goal will revolve.